In the last few years, we've all seen a huge increase of billionaires in the world, and most of them are quite flashy and they like to show their wells. But there are also many that fly under the radar. From the founder of one of the biggest companies in the world to the one that gave his entire fortune away, here are 15 extremely rich people who live as poor. Number 15. Jeff Bezos Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, is the richest man in the world. His net worth is about 198 billion US dollars as of April 2021, and he's only getting richer by the minute. He's constantly coming up with new things and ideas to make even more money. But when he was 30 years old back in 1994, Bezos had just quit his Wall Street job to start a little business selling books. You guessed it, it was Amazon. At first, he only had 10 employees, and he says he had to drive the package to the post office himself in his 1987 Chevy Blazer. Depriving you of energy or is your work generating energy for you? Fast forward three years when Amazon went public and Bezos' wealth was now over $12 billion. Although you would have never guessed it by looking at him. You need a high speed camera. Yes. Exactly. No, I want <laughs> When he became a billionaire, Bezos swapped his Chevy for another model, a Honda Accord. Also, Amazon's headquarters were in the same street as a pawn shop, a heroin needle exchange, and a porno parlor. In fact, Bezos' desk was made out of an upscaled wooden door and some 2 by 4s And not only him, actually everyone in that office had repurposed doors as desks. When they asked him why, he said it was on message. He wanted to make sure to spend his money on things that matter to the customers and not on things that didn't. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the star topic. This picture shows the perfect example of a rich businessman living an extremely frugal lifestyle. Well, except for the car, of course. Apparently, nobody in his neighborhood knew he was rich until he bought that Audi R8, and then hundreds of journalists and beggars swarmed to his door. Maybe that's why he was hiding his wealth. What do you think? Because that house is in ruins, especially when you see it next to a brand new car. Comment down below with the hashtag star topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Warren Buffett Warren Buffett is the perfect example of the American self-made man. He bought his first stock market share at age 11, and when he was only 14, he bought a small farm. He is considered to be one of the best investors in history, and he is, today, one of the richest men in the world. But he still lives in his three-bedroom little house where he got married 50 years ago in Midtown Omaha in Nebraska. He refuses to move. He says his current house has everything he needs, so why change it? Although he owns one of the biggest private jet companies in the world, he travels economy class. He drives his own car everywhere he goes and has never had a personal driver. He's the owner of 63 extremely successful companies, but he's never had a cell phone or a computer. He's a very different kind of billionaire, the kind that sends written letters to his CEOs. It's very easy to figure out the value of a bond. It can change tomorrow if interest rates change, but you are the cash flows are printed on the bond. The reason Buffett is so frugal is because he simply enjoys the simple life. He feels no need to spend big money or to shake hands with the big society. He's even said once that the happiest people are not the ones that necessarily have the best things, but they simply appreciate more what they have, the philosophy he seems to live by. Number 13. Mark Zuckerberg we all know who Mark Zuckerberg is. He co-founded Facebook, the most influential company of all times. But how rich is he exactly? His net worth is at 111.6 billion US dollars as of April 2021. And like many Silicon Valley moguls, he isn't into flashing cash so much as he's interested in his work. You'll never see him wearing an expensive suit. He always wears jeans and a sweater. 
but are they cheap though? Apparently, they're not. Just one of his sweaters can retail for thousands of dollars. So he isn't into bling, but that also doesn't mean he's cheap. There's also the fact that Zuckerberg never drives expensive cars. He's been seen in an Acura TSX, a Honda Fit, or a Golf GTI, and all three cars are valued for less than 30,000 US dollars. So I actually think when you do stuff well, you don't, you, you shouldn't have to do big crazy things. The only thing that he seems to spend lots of money on is real estate, and that's because wherever he goes, he is recognized. Therefore, when he buys a new house, he tends to buy all the houses around it for privacy. Zuckerberg isn't into traveling either. When he does travel, it's for work, and Facebook picks up the bill. Only security for him and his family cost the company $23 million in 2020. But he seems to be extremely philanthropic too. He gives billions of dollars to charity and medical research yearly. Number 12. Chuck Feeney Chuck Feeney has been nicknamed the secret billionaire, and that's because he's very good at not drawing attention to himself. If you see him walking down the street, you'd not even notice he's there. He looks like a senior citizen on his way to the bus stop. He originally made his fortune by co-founding the Duty Free Shoppers Empire, but despite his incredible wealth, he lives a very normal and modest life. And he does more than that. In 1982, he secretly set up a foundation called the Atlantic Philanthropies, and he transferred almost all his money into it. For 38 years, he made countless donations to charities and universities all over the world. So much so that when he turned 89 years old, he made public that he was finally broke, and that this was his dream all along. This man made a fortune with his own sweat and hard work, and his dream was to give it all away to those who need it more. He even addressed the upper class once and told them not to wait until after death to experience the joy of giving away their money. He's starting to sound like a real-life Saint. The most endearing part of it all is that he never wanted people to know what he was doing. He didn't do it for the publicity, he just genuinely cared about people. Number 11. Azim Premji Azim Premji is the founder, chairman, and director of Ypro Limited, which is an Indian multinational corporation that provides information, technology consulting, and business process services. He has been called the Indian Bill Gates because of his major contributions to charity. The origins of his company are very humble. Ypro was founded by his father, and it was, at first, a cooking oil company. But the business tycoon transformed it into a worldwide conglomerate. You know, you, you don't create wealth by redistributing wealth. You create well by creating them. Despite being the second richest man in India, Premji always kept close to his modest roots. He never stopped traveling in economy class. His car is a Honda City, and after popular demand for him to update it, he ended up buying a second-hand Mercedes-Benz from one of his employees. But he apparently prefers public transportation anyway. He always orders food from the company canteen, and his favorite food is street food. His employees love him because he never asks them to do anything he wouldn't do himself. And he is the first non-American person to sign the Giving Pledge, which is a campaign to encourage wealthy people to give the majority of their wealth for the overall welfare of humanity. The world would be a better place if all rich people were like him. Number 10. Alice Walton Alice Walton is the Walmart Empire heiress, making her the richest woman in the world. Her net worth is calculated to be at $54.4 billion. She ranks ninth on Forbes Billionaires list, and she doesn't mind spending her fortune. She's already built a $500 million private art collection. In 2011, she opened a $50 million Museum of American Art in Arkansas to house such an enormous collection. And three years later, she nonchalantly spent $40 $44.4 million on one single piece of artwork by the artist Georgia O'Keeffe. But even if her lifestyle seems opulent, she's also donated millions over the years to the arts and other causes. She donated $225 million worth of Walmart shares to the Walton Family Foundation and also $120 million to the University of Arkansas. She also owns two Texas ranches where she's been breeding horses for years. And she also has her own charitable foundation that deals with causes like the arts, education, and health. And it's, we're now, I think, at a turning point in uh, how we present Latino culture. So she might be the richest woman on earth, but she apparently donates quite a bit as well. Number 9. Ingvar Kamprad 
Ingvar Kamprad started the furniture empire IKEA when he was only 17 years old. Little did he know he was creating the world's most famous furniture brand of all time. He was ranked fourth richest man in the world by the Forbes billionaire list. But even after building one of the most recognizable brands on earth, he kept his frugal lifestyle. He never stopped flying coach and he remained faithful to his 20-year-old Volvo. But his obsession with not spending money goes far and beyond. He apparently bought his clothes at a flea market. When he was asked about it, he simply replied that it was in his nature to be thrifty. There are many people who don't like to take risks, and that owing to the facts. He refused to pay lots of money for a haircut ever since they charged him 22 euros in the Netherlands. He then opted for always getting his hair cut in developing countries, like Vietnam, for example. He even wrote a little pamphlet called The Testament of a Furniture Dealer, in which he explains the guidelines of his frugal philosophy, and IKEA employees still follow it to this day, even after his death. For Comprod, wasting resources was a mortal sin. Number 8. Tony Shea Tony Shea is living proof that you can become a business magnate and still be a very good person with strong values and a lovely personality. He created Zappos.com, which was an online shoe business, but for its employees, it was much more than that. Shea took a completely revolutionary and unique approach on how to run a business. Uh, within a year, I ended up joining full-time at Zappos, and I've been with Zappos ever since. Zappos.com had a decentralized management model, and the company's philosophy was absolutely relationship-centered. That means that the policy was to create and maintain relationships with people, which were born out of respect and mutual benefit. His goal wasn't to become a rich person. He wanted to create a lifelong bond with his customers. His fixation on being helpful was so intense that if they didn't have the pair of shoes somebody was looking for, Zappos Zappos employees would go as far as to direct the person to their competitors that carried it. He unfortunately passed away after a tragic house fire, but during his time on this earth, he inspired millions of people and helped countless new businesses to thrive. He proved that you don't need to destroy your competitors to succeed, but that good intentions and love are more important. Number 7. Amancio Ortega his name might not ring a bell for you, but I bet you know about his company. I'm talking about the brand Zara, the Spanish high street retail empire. Today, you can find a Zara store in every continent in the world, but in its origins, it was a very modest little shop in the city of Coruña. And despite him having been the richest man in the world for many years, he always kept his life very private and humble. He only did three interviews during his lifetime and only agreed to be photographed by the press for the first time in 1999. He never moved out of his hometown of Coruña, where he takes his morning coffee every day at the same coffee shop. He always wore the same simple suit with no tie at work and enjoyed eating with his employees at the company's cafeteria every day. He never liked being the center of attention and always dresses very casually and modestly. He's one of the most mysterious billionaires in history, but we do know that his favorite pastime is horse riding, although he rarely got to do it since he's said to be a complete complete workaholic and enjoyed going to work too much. Number 6. Tim Cook Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple, and everyone that knows him says that he's incredibly simple, just like the products he sells. First of all, he certainly does not enjoy talking about himself, he prefers to talk about his work. Cook is a self-proclaimed workaholic that wakes up very early and manages to answer 800 emails every single day. And by early, I mean 3.45 a.m. He reads every message and email he receives and does it with great care. He is an extremely private person. He doesn't deem himself to be interesting enough to pay attention to. He enjoys simple foods like scrambled egg whites, bacon, sugar-free cereal, and unsweetened almond milk for breakfast. Although he is very demanding, all his employees say he is the perfect boss. He's always collaborative and he listens to everybody with respect. He's the first one to arrive at the office and also the last one to leave. And in his free time, he enjoys the outdoors and bike riding. On top of that, he works out every morning at 5 a.m. at an outside gym. He might be one of the most successful CEOs in the world, but he's still a hard worker and a fair boss. Number 5. Carlos Slim 
Carlos Slim Helu is a Mexican business tycoon born to Lebanese immigrant parents. He became one of the richest men in the world thanks to his massive telecom empire. But despite being a multi-billionaire, he enjoys a frugal lifestyle. He doesn't own any private planes or yachts, and on top of that, he's lived in the same house for over 40 years. He's a self-made man, and his fortune is believed to reach $51 billion, according to Forbes. But it all started when he was 10 years old, and he began selling drinks and sweets to his family and friends. And he's always kept a taste for the simple things in life. He still drives himself everywhere, and his friends note a constant lack of ostentation from his part. Despite being his country's wealthiest man, he limits his monthly salary to $24,000. He also funds education and health projects through two foundations that he created, and has reported that his biggest goal in life is to fight against poverty. He keeps investing billions each year into his country to jumpstart the economy and, in that way, help millions of people. Number 4. Bill Gates Bill Gates is the second richest man in the world after Jeff Bezos. His net worth is calculated at 139 billion US dollars. But since he stepped down from the Microsoft Board of Directors in 2019, he has since devoted his time to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, an organization that donates money to research and charitable projects. And he's very outspoken about America's public health policies, especially in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. But aside from being such a crucial figure of this century, he's a very normal guy. He works out every morning and catches up with the news. But what he enjoys the most is spending time with his family. His favorite food of all time is the cheeseburger, like he said himself in a Reddit comment. He has a very packed daily routine in five minute intervals. But at the end of the day, he likes to unwind by, you'd never guess it, doing the dishes. This relaxes him, apparently. But most importantly, he has donated half his fortune to charity, which is an incredibly rare thing to do for billionaires. And he works hard every day to help those in need. Number 3. David Cheriton David Sheraton is a Stanford professor, and his estimated net worth is $1.3 billion that he amassed from Google shares. He invested 100000 bucks in the company when it was just starting, and the rest is history. Since then, he has co-founded three other companies, Arista Networks, Granite Systems, and Kalia. All three of them are very profitable and are doing very well. But he is the complete opposite of the idea of a greedy, flashy billionaire. He even gets offended by the so-called billionaire lifestyle. He says that people that build mansions with dozens of bathrooms, jacuzzis, and other opulent features, that there's something wrong with them. He's unapologetic about the issue. By his own words, his most recent splurge was back in 2012 when he bought a Honda Odyssey. And apparently, he feels spoiled whenever he goes on holidays, which is is very rarely. He is one of the most humble billionaires of today, and he hates being called one. In other words, if you saw him walking down the streets, you would never guess in a million years that he's a rich man. Number 2. Carl Albrecht Carl Albrecht is the co-founder of Aldi, which is one of Europe's biggest supermarket empires. In other words, Aldi is to Europe what Walmart is to the US. He created Aldi with his late brother, Theo. They were both raised by very humble parents. Their mother was a shopkeeper, and their father worked at the coal mines. Theo was once kidnapped for ransom in 1971, and Carl had to pay $4 million, which he later wrote off as a business expense. Carl grew up in post-war Germany when basic necessities were very scarce, so people were used to frugal lifestyles, and even when the economy healed, most people in Germany still remained somewhat thrifty, and the Albrechts were no exception. Actually, the name Aldi is an acronym formed from Albrecht Discount. Bulk buying from obscure suppliers helped them achieve their basic aim of selling at the lowest prices. But neither of the two brothers became flashy billionaires. They remained quite discreet and private. They stayed loyal to the message their brand impersonates, and that was to bring products at low prices for those who can't afford expensive groceries. Number 1. Sarah Jessica Parker 
Sarah Jessica Parker and her husband, actor Matthew Broderick, have a collective net worth of $100 million, but they live a surprisingly modest life. They live happily in a simple brownstone house in Greenwich Village, and they dress their children in hand-me-downs. They both seem to have a very modest appreciation for the money they've made over the years. This is due, perhaps, to how Sarah was raised by a poor family of eight that depended on welfare to survive, and she seems very loyal to that frugal lifestyle to this day. They've embraced the modest life so much so that you wouldn't even see them spend their money in fancy restaurants, let alone in extravagant holidays or private jets. Even if she is an extremely successful actress who has appeared in many famous TV shows and movies, she has never once let herself be tempted by the opulence that Hollywood can bring. She's determined to raise her three children without any kind of excess, and teach them to value money, just like her parents taught her. So, apparently, some habits are just too hard to shake, especially if they were taught during childhood. I guess some people don't make money just for the sake of having money. What about you? If you were rich, what kind of billionaire would you be? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!